Welcome to our Watch and Learn. I'm Johnny Barfus, studio educator here at Handy Quilter. With me is Kelly Ashton. Welcome to our Watch and Learn. <laughs> Thanks. So today we're going to be talking about managing large quilts on a small frame, specifically the little foot frame. We're going to start out with uh, loading a basted quilt, how to keep it square as you quilt, and then how to load without basting. And that's uh, pre-basting, right? So we yes. get that a lot with that question, yeah. do I have to baste, do I have to pin, do I have to spray? We're going to show you a way that you don't have to do that on the little foot frame. Yeah, All we're right? going to show you a couple of different ways and hopefully you can use some of the techniques that we're showing and maybe you have already developed your own and that's okay too. So there's always more than one right way. So we're going to start with this quilt. This quilt is already basted. It had um, a little bit of um, spray basting and then we put it on a machine and did some machine basting on it. So this okay. has quite a bit of basting. And so I'm going to load it. Um, one thing you want to make sure you do is have plenty of backings for it. And we're going to talk about that too. Okay. So I'm going to load it like I'm going to quilt this edge. So I'm going to come right over here. And I've got to leave enough room over here because the machine doesn't go all the way to the edge. Right? Right. Okay. And this quilt does have a little quilting already because we have used this a little bit in the past. So it does have some quilting. So we're just reloading it on okay. the little foot, right? Yes. And I'm loading, I'm using the easy grasp, grasp clamps on the back pull. Um, some people prefer to use the super clamp there, but I like the easy grasp clamps back there. I'm gonna slide this under here. Okay. So I'm lining it up with that, the brown border that you can see. I think I just slid it. I'm gonna put another clamp over here. lid just a little bit and I'm gonna have three clamps across the back these once again these are the easy grasp grasp clamps oh my there is a lock on this back pole and when you're loading like this you want to make sure that that lock is in place okay all right and after I get the three on the back this is what I like to do I I take the super clamp and I'm going to put that on the front. So I'm going to roll it right here and put this, the super clamp right there. Okay, I want to point out a couple of things with the clamps. I'm going to put one more right here. I'm going to put one right here. So some things I want to point out. The easy grasp clamps in the back, they should be straight up. The handles need to be straight up. If they're rolled backwards, that handle might catch on the machine. So we want to make sure that those clamps, those handles, are straight up okay and the the clamps in the front I'm gonna scoop this one down a little bit they need to be rolled forward now watch what happens with my quilt sandwich when I roll these forward it levels out the quilt and it's really important to have a level quilt to be working on you get a much much nicer stitch if you have a le level quilt okay then I have this fabric back in the back that's kind of in the way so the machine comes with hold tight clamps these are the hold tight clamps they look like the, the channel locks they're small and there's actually a larger one as well so when you get more quilt finished you can use the larger one but right now I just have a little bit of fabric so I'm just going to take this fabric and roll it up and I'm going to put the hold tight clamp. I can put it around the handle like this. Or I can actually, if you look at these easy grass clamps, there's kind of a ridge right there. I can actually roll this up and put it around that whole clamp and set the edge of that hold tight clamp right in the ridge of the easy grasp, big or small. And that's to manage your fabric that you have on your quilt top and back, point. right? Just right. to keep it out of the way of our We've got to keep space. it out of the way. Now I've got to move this machine out of the way so you can see the corner right here. This, this pull in the back right here, we do not want fabric underneath, underneath that clamp. We don't want to break that clamp. So we're just going to, to smooth it out in the corner just like that. And remember that the machine doesn't quilt. I'm not going to be able to quilt this section right here because of the machine coming over here and it hits the edge 
So I've got about six inches right there that I'm not quilting. So it's okay if I have this just smoothed out in the corner right there. Okay, we, we often get asked, okay, you showed us the first part. How do we do the next part? So I wanna show you how I would advance it so that I can kind of keep it square and move it across. So I'm going to t pull off the front clamps and the side clamps. Oh, I, I didn't put that sixth one on. That's why I kind of had, I just set these out of the way. I'm gonna take off my hold tight clamps. I know you just saw me put them on, but we're gonna take them off. And I'm going to take off these two easy grass clamps. I'm only gonna leave one on. Okay, now when you take these off, if you pull at an angle instead of straight out, they come off a lot easier. And I don't want these sitting on my quilt, so I'm gonna move them over to the side. Maybe you can hold that, John. I'll hold this one. Okay. This is why it's important to have a quilter's assistant with you, <laughs> to have people to hold your stuff. That's right. Okay, so I have one clamp on, and I'm just gonna come, and I'm just gonna pull the whole quilt this direction because see, I've got to quilt that other end. I forgot to tell you after I loaded it that I quilted the part that was in the throat space. Now I'm ready to advance it. So I have to pull it over here far enough that I can get to the edge of the quilt and leave six inches over there, okay? So I'm going to straighten that out. I'm gonna make sure my, my clamp is straight up. I'm gonna double check that I have moved it over far enough to the left. I put those on my handlebar so I can see them, but you might have a better place you like to keep them. I'm gonna have three across the back, and I do have the basting or the seam from the very top of the quilt that I can see, and I can kind of check that I have it straight across there. So that helps me keeping it square as I'm advancing it. I like the super clamp next. I'm gonna pull this out straight put my super clamp on and tip it forward. I'm going to put one on this end, tip it forward. I'm gonna put one on the, the left side. And then once again, I'll use the hold tight clamps to put this fabric up out of the way. And now I can finish this last section of my quilt over here on the right, okay? So next time I advance it, I'm gonna take off all of the clamps because I, I'm not gonna be sliding it straight across. But I, my, my suggestion would be is to baste across all the way across the bottom of this throat space. And then when I advance it forward, I can line it up with that seam, that basting seam that I'm advancing it with. I personally like to pick out the, the basting before I stitch because I don't like to stitch across it and kind of lock the threads together, but you can decide how you like to do that as well. So now let's talk about, this is just the top, the top of the quilt. What's gonna happen when I get to the center of the quilt? Johnny, I'm gonna have more fabric building up right here, right? Right. So I don't really want the entire quilt loaded up on the back here. So when I get to the middle of the quilt, my suggestion would be to, to turn it around and start from the middle back down. Okay. That's on this big of a quilt. If it, just depend, it just depends on the quilt you're working on. You may choose to just go all the way from the top to the bottom. But on a quilt this big, that's probably full size, I'm going to go to the middle and then I'm gonna stop and turn it around and go from the middle to the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> um, I also chose to do my borders separately on this quilt. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I quilted the top border. I'm going to quilt to the bottom and quilt the bottom border. And then the thing that's great about the little foot is the versatility because I can easily switch it and do my border all the way across the top rather than doing it in smaller chunks. Right. So I chose on this one to do all four borders individually and I'll do them um, horizontally with the bars. So that's how I would do this quilt. You'd flip the bar, you'd turn the quilt horizontally to do yes. that border. Okay. Yes. So awesome. I'm going to go, I'm start at the top, go to the middle, then I'm going to flip it around, do the middle down to the bottom, and then I will flip it on the sides and do the side borders across the top. 
like that. So that's my suggestion with managing a quilt top on the smaller, or a, a larger quilt on this frame. Um, this frame makes it so great to be able to stand up and quilt and be able to do it in a small space. Yeah. So, but Johnny, you're going to show us how to manage the quilt on the little foot frame without even having to baste it first. So give us yes. a second. I'll take this one off and we'll get that one ready to go. All right. Okay. Okay. I get to be the assistant now. Johnny gets to do all the hard work. So, oh, uh, the fun work. The fun work. Yeah. Not hard work. Okay. This is the backing of our quilt. You'll notice that I sewed a little extra on this one because the backing of this compared to the top was exactly the same size. For the little buddy, we were figuring we need to add at least six inches, probably six to eight is what we recommend. Usually for the back of a um, long arm, we recommend four inches on either side. But for the little buddy, we want a little bit more. I'm going to show you. Sorry, I keep saying little buddy. We're talking about the little foot frame right now. I apologize. So I added just some strips of fabric onto the back of this, the backing of this quilt. I'm going to show you how we load this, uh, just the backing first. As Kelly pointed out, I just want to reiterate, this, uh, this clamp right here is designed to hold this pole only. So it has a little clamp behind it that clamps it down so it doesn't come out, but it is not designed to hold fabric or a quilt sandwich. So make sure you're not putting anything in, in that clamp like that. Uh, Conversely, or in addition, when you roll, put this on there, the clamps work better if they have some batting. So I just grabbed some scrap batting, or Kelly grabbed some scrap, scrap batting for me. You gotta have an assistant sometimes. You gotta have your quilter's assistant, you guys. Which I usually don't, so. So I'm just gonna put that, uh, thank you. A little scrap of batting along there. And that is just to clamp it in that pole. To keep the clamp on there tight, nice and tight. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Like so. And then I'm gonna move to the middle. I think that will work. Mm -hmm. And that's going to put this one in there as well. Let's see. It always goes nice and smoothly when we're doing it on film, right? Yep. Uh, you can tell this is largely unrehearsed. Well, Kelly rehearsed hers, but I didn't rehearse mine. But you can see that I have that. Can you see that, Kayla, now? So I've got that top, that backing, I mean, straight and lined up there. Then I can put my batting on. And again, this batting was cut pretty close to the right size of this quilt top and back. There we go. So you're just loading the back and lining up the batting. I'm just lining up the batting with this quilt top, I mean the quilt okay. backing. Okay. Make sure there's no puckers or gathers. And then, should I put that on there first? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to put the top on. You base across the batting. Oh, base first? Yeah. Base across the batting and the backing. And let me use my uh, channel lock on there. Okay. 
So tell us about what wheel you're putting the channel lock on to lock it to so I'm, straight across. I'm putting the wheel on the machine, on the carriage, so it can't go back and forth this way, so that I can have a straight plumb line, we call it, a plumb line. Yeah. Anytime you're using the channel locks, you just think about which wheels do I want to stop moving? And in this case, we want to stop the wheels that are moving forward and back. And those wheels are found on, on the machine sitting on top of the carriage. So it just has to lock one of those wheels. And when you put the channel lock in place, it needs to be around the wheel and it needs to touch both sides of the track. So it has to be sitting all the way around the wheel and the little rubber parts on the end have to be touching both sides of the track. That was a pretty good demonstration of that machine going down that straight line. There you go. Might need to be loosened a little bit uh, this way. That's great. So we're just wanting to make a basting line across this batting and the backing so that when you line up your quilt top, you have a perfectly straight line across the top to line it up to. So how are you going to do a basting stitch on the Simply 16, Johnny? I am going to drop my stitches per inch down to four. That is the smallest stitch length on the Simply. Okay. And so it's going to be a bigger stitch, not exact. That's what we have of our basting in the Simply. It's going to do a little straight line all the way across. Get rid of some of those threads as we go. I'm just going to go to about right there. Perfect. I could, can I suggest, um, I like a little bigger stitch when I'm basting on top of the quilt. So you could even put this in manual mode. Ah, uh, yes. And put it at a low manual speed and you would get a bigger basting stitch. Okay. So if you like a bigger basting stitch, that would work well as, to, uh, work Perfect. as well. Um, I don't have any. I do. Oh, I found like, some right here. Okay. I got the handy zing zingers. I lost my scissors sometime in the night, so. No more quilting in the middle of the <laughs> night, Johnny. <laughs> I don't know where I lost them, it was a problem, obviously. I okay, hope, I just I put hope that. Buster didn't get them. Oh, Buster. Maybe it was Mabel. Oh, could, oh Mabel. I'm watching Mabel could have this been Mabel. week. Okay, so where. are you gonna pull off the clamps on the front first? Yes, Okay. but which is the top of this quilt? Is it a square? It's a square. It's a square it's quilt. It's a square quilt. Okay. Assistant, would you hold that, please, yes, for a moment? Yes, thank you. I don't need you to hold this one because we have the handlebars right there. So then, is this camera better? This is just what I do on, on the frame mounted, the, uh, the bigger frames. I based a line straight across my backing and batting, and then I lined my quilt top up to that line so I can have a square quilt. So this is perfect to, to get started in having a square quilt on the simply, on the little, little foot. On the little foot. Okay, Kayla. So I've lined up that quilt top with that basting line that plumb line. And I'm first going to put this one on here and then adjust it. Or if you choose to baste it before you put these on too, that might work. So you just find out what works best for you. Oh. Could work either Is way. that how you do it? Let's do it this way. We're going to do it this way. On, on my other frame, I, I don't tighten it up until I have based it across your frame. Oh. But everybody has different techniques, and it's Yeah, okay. that's a good thought. I was just thinking it was pulling a little tight. Yeah. 
Okay, do you mind holding that again? Thank you. For I'd one second. To. Oh my gosh. It really is nice having an assistant. If you can get one, I highly recommend it. I'm available. <laughs> I can hold your clamps. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do that stitch across that same line. I'm going to take that clamp off there. Okay, is that looking good? So you do like that. Oh, not like that. You gotta just slow the manual speed down. I'm gonna slow things down a little bit. So that's what you're saying. You can do a yeah, and just move the machine. Moving the machine faster, faster makes a bigger stitch. Yeah. And if you like to move it slower, the four stitches print works great. So either way, you have a couple of options. So I'm just keeping that quilt top lined up with that plumb line, stitching all the way across, keeping. And you didn't use your channel locks this time. You just are free, free motion I'm moving it across the top. I'm just lining it up with okay. that plumb line. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And that is about as far as we can go. Or about as far as we went last time. Okay, I would stop right there and leave your needle down. Okay. Because then put your clamps on. Okay. And, yeah, like this one on the side. That one, we don't have a side. I mean, it's like so. Right? Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, yeah. So then, like Kelly mentioned, I can base down this way and then all the way across. That's a pretty big stitch. It'll be easy to pick out later. So now you have a straight line across the side and a straight line across the front. So after you've finished quilting in this area, you have another straight line to line it up with. I yes. like that. Yes, definitely. Okay. I think that's all we have. Then we like would advance like Kelly showed us, right? Is there anything that we missed? We'd advance it over. I, I personally would do the top row. Uh -huh. And then I would advance to the second row right. and do one section and this, then the second section. So yeah. just like the other, yeah. the other quilt. So, yeah. Okay. I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can work well with the little foot frame. So it's a perfect solution for being able to quilt large quilts in a small space. So very versatile. So thank you for joining us for this Watch and Learn. So we hope you'll join us next week. So give us a like. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to even to our YouTube channel and we have educational videos for you every week. So have some fun quilting. <laughs>